If you've been following along, in the last few videos, we automated regular VM deployment on Proxmox using Terraform. Then we leveled up and started using cloud init VMs. That means now we can pre-configure things like usernames, passwords, SSH keys, and even static IPs before the VM even boots up. For today's video, I've spun up a new VM for this demo and copied over the files we were using earlier so we can continue right from where we left off. We'll make the necessary changes to support cloud init, and from there, continue building on top of what we've already done. In this video, we're going to take the cloud init VM we built earlier and combine it with Terraform. The idea is we'll use Terraform to actually create cloud init VMs in Proxmox and also set the IP address, username, password, and SSH keys all through code. That means we can go from nothing to a fully configured VM that's ready to go, all automated with Terraform. And in future videos, we'll take it even further by letting Ansible step in right after the VM is created to finish the setup automatically. So we're getting really close to full end-to-end -end automation. And if you missed any of the earlier videos, you can check them out using the i button or the links down in the description. Now let's get to the good part. Here, I've already got all the necessary files in this directory. To start, I'm going to create a copy just as a backup. I will name this one as Terraform. So if something goes wrong, I can easily restore the original files without starting from scratch. Because this folder contains all the Terraform configuration files, along with the Docker Compose file we've been using. So I will organize this project in such a way that it will make easy to manage and scale across all my Proxmox environments. To do that, I will create a new directory called the NVS. This directory will hold separate configurations for each of my Proxmox nodes. For example, I'll create a subdirectory as Proxmox1, which also matches with a node name. Later on, I can add more subdirectories inside ENVS for other nodes like Proxmox, depending on my setup. But as of now, I don't need this. Next, let's move all the Terraform files into this Proxmox directory. But I will keep the Docker Compose file in the parent directory itself, so that a single, consistent Docker container can run across all Proxmox instances. Now, in our previous setup, I already configured the credentials file, and if you followed along, you can reuse that same file here. But since I'm setting this up on a new machine, I'll quickly configure it again. First, let's copy the Proxmox IP address and paste it into the Proxmox API URL variable. Now we'll update the API token ID and the API secret. For that, I'll generate a fresh token. So let's head over to Proxmox and click on the data center. Then under permissions, go to API tokens. Here you can see I already have a token. Let's remove this one first. Now click add. Here we need to specify the user and the token ID. I'll use root as the user and Terraform as the token ID. Also make sure to uncheck the privilege separation. Then hit add. Once the token is generated, make sure to copy the token ID and paste into the Proxmox API token ID variable. Then copy the secret. You can use this button as well to copy it. If you close this window without copying, you won't be able to see the secret again. Now let's paste the secret into the Proxmox API token field. So once everything's copied, I'll go ahead and close the window. With that, our credentials file is ready. Now let's update the provider file. But before that, I'm going to create a new file for variables. It's a good practice to keep all the variables in a separate file. Since Terraform automatically loads and processes all .tf files in the directory, so the file name can be anything. Let's move all the variables from the provider file into this new file. We'll configure these variables later. For now, let's go back to the provider file. This file was created a few months ago, and since then, the Telmate provider might got updated. So let's go to Google, then search for Telmate Proxmox Terraform provider, and open the official documentations. As you can see here, the latest version is 3.0.2RC01. So there have been few more new releases since we last configured it. If you want to continue with the previous version itself, you can do that. But make sure to open the documentation for that specific version and configure the provider properly. For this setup, I want to use the latest version. So I'll click on Use Provider in the top right corner and copy the version. 
then paste it into the provider file. I will also rename my provider to main, as many people like to follow this naming convention. Now we will move on to the Terraform resource file. But before making any changes here, I will move the VM configurations into the variables file. We will modify this file later. Let's switch back to our resource file. To make it easy to understand the purpose of this file, I will rename it to cloud init. This is the same base configuration file we use in our previous video to automate standard Proxmox VMs. But since we're working with cloud init VMs, we need to make a few changes in this file. First, let's update the resource name to cloud init. Then for the clone, I'm going to use the Ubuntu cloud init template. If you already have a cloud init template, then you can continue with that. But if you're creating it for the first time, keep in mind that it's quite different from setting up a standard VM. You can click on the I button to watch my video on creating a cloud init VM in Proxmox. So let's update this template name in our resource file. Now to align with the latest version of the Telme provider, we need to make a few more adjustments in this file. So let's take a quick look at the documentation. Under resources, go to Proxmox VM QEMU. Here you'll notice that the CPU settings are now defined in a block, which includes types, sockets, and cores. Let's do the same in our file. I will add the CPU block and copy the CPU parameter. Let's rename this to type. Next, I will move the sockets and cores inside the CPU block. For this setup, the target node is Proxmox 1. Let me update it as well. And since we're configuring this file for cloud init VMs, so we also need to set the OS type to cloud init. Now to access cloud init VMs through the terminal, we need to attach a serial socket with an ID and type. So let's add a block as serial. I will set the ID to zero and the type to socket. There's one more important change we need to make. As per the latest version of the provider, we need to assign an ID for network. So let's add ID equals to zero in the network block. Currently, for the tag attribute, we're using a variable to set the VLAN tag. But Proxmox VM also has an attribute called tags. So to avoid any confusion, I will rename this variable to network tag. Next is the disk setup. It is slightly different for cloud and VMs. First, I'll reduce the disk size to 32 gigabytes. Now here, instead of format, we'll set replicate equals to true. Next, we need to attach a cloud init drive so it could be configured properly. In our existing cloud init VM, we can see a IDE drive is attached. So let's define a new block as IDE in our file. Inside that we will define IDE zero as cloud init disk and set the storage equals to local. There's one more important setting we need to configure. Since we'll be using these cloud init VMs as servers, we need them to start automatically on boot. Also, we might need to add startup and shutdown delay settings. All of this can be configured through Terraform. You'll find the full list of options in the Telmate provider documentation. But for now, to keep it simple, I will use the on boot and startup attributes. Let's go ahead and add them. I will define them as variables. Now let's move on to the actual cloud init configuration. This is also documented in the Telme provider. There are a lot of things you can configure here, but in this setup, we'll just use a few basics like IP config zero, skip IPv6, CI user, CI password, and SSH key. I'll hard code it here just for now. However, this isn't a good practice. We will use variable for SSH key as well. These are usually enough to fully automate the initial VM setup using Terraform. You can explore the other options later based on what you need. Most of the fields I'm using will be set as variables so we can customize them for each VM from the variables file. Also, I think my target node name is Proxmox-1, so I'll quickly update that. Now we can start configuring the variables file. First, I'll select all the variables we've used in our cloud init file and copy them. Then I'll open the variables.tf file and paste them in. Here, I'll go through each one and define their data types. These are the variables I'm using for my setup, but if you're using any other variables, you can check the provider documentation to find the correct data types. 
Now let's define our first VM. Here I will copy the variables we defined earlier and set the values for each of them specific to this VM. For the startup variable, I will use the same string format what we have in Proxmox for an existing VM. For IP configuration, I'm going to use static IPs for each VM, so let's define it in the same way like it's mentioned in Proxmox. Now I'll set the CI user and CI password. It's not a best practice to hard code them like this, but just to keep it simple for now, I'll use plain values. Once that's done, I'll test it first, then we will add more VMs here. Next, I will configure the Docker Compose file. Currently, it has only the minimal setup. So let's add few more settings to give us more control over the container. As you can see, I have not mentioned any Docker image version. But to keep things stable, it's always a good practice to use a specific image version. So let's check what the latest stable version available. I'll go with the 1.12 LTS version. Let's copy it to our Docker Compose file. This time I will add a container name as Terraform. Next, let's modify the volume section. I will bind the current directory of the Docker Compose file to the slash config directory of the Docker container. Let's add one more directory as data to slash data directory of the container. I will use this directory to store the downloaded provider file. Currently it does not exist, so let me quickly create it. Now let's modify the working directory as per our directory structure to use the Proxmox 1 Terraform configuration. This configuration will work perfectly fine without using the network mode as host, so we can skip that. We also don't need to expose any ports for this setup. We also need to specify the data directory to store the provider files. For that, we need to define an environment variable TF data directory and set it to slash data. Now let's go ahead and test our scripts. To do that, I will create a shell script file and drop in all the commands we might need so that I don't need to type those commands every time. Eventually, we will replace this with a proper CI CD pipeline to handle VM deployment automatically. Once the file is created, I'll go to the terminal and make this file as an executable script. Inside this script, I will run Terraform using the Docker Compose file and then pass the Terraform command at the end. If you have seen my previous video, you might already be familiar with how these commands work. So first, let's add the init command. It will initialize the project. And if it is already initialized, then it will upgrade it. Let me run that. As you can see, the Terraform container starts up and initialize the project. Also, if we check the data directory now, we will see the provider files are showing up there. If we want to run Terraform plan, we can just reuse the same Docker Compose part of the command and just add plan at the end. But before applying that, I will add two more VMs inside our variables file and update each one with the right VM ID, name, and IP addresses. Also, let me quickly fix the order spelling in the startup variable. Now let's run the Terraform plan. You can see Terraform has successfully planned three VMs. Next, let's run the terraform apply command. But before that, I will make the script more dynamic. Since the first part of these commands is always the same, so let's create a variable called tfcmd and store that part as a string. Then in the docker compose file, I'll update the working directory by replacing the directory inside envs with a variable called terraform env. This way we can reuse this same setup for different Proxmox environments. Now in our shell script file, I will set up a function called terraform plan. In this function, I will pass the environment name where we want to create the VMs. Let's define this function. First, I will define terraform env variable with the first argument. So it will take the environment as input, which we will pass while calling the function, then export it. Next, I will use the tfcmd variable and add the terraform init and upgrade commands at the end. Let's do the same for the plan command. So when we call the plan function, it'll initialize the project first. And if the project is already initialized, then it will upgrade it. 
Right after that, Terraform will plan the VMs. I will create another function as Terraform apply and modify the last command to run Terraform apply along with auto approve. Let's test the apply function by passing proxmox1 as the environment and execute the script. Let's go to proxmox. Here you will notice that three VMs are getting created one after another. Now I'm going to add one more function to remove the VMs. I will name it as Terraform Destroy. Inside that I will add the Terraform Destroy command. Let's run the destroy function now. In Proxmox, you'll see the VMs are disappearing one by one. And that's how you can deploy CloudNet-based virtual machines using Terraform. Now in this video, I haven't started the VMs or connected to them by SSH. That's because the main goal here was to show you how to set up and automate the VM creation process. But you can definitely start them and test SSH access. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. In the next video, I will log into these machines with Ansible and configure them automatically. If you found this video helpful, you might also like the next one.